On that note, my next guest says the genie's out of the bottle on inflation and history shows getting it back in is going to be painful. Joining me is Aswath Demoter and he's NYU Stern School of Business professor. Aswath, it's great to have you here and you went through, looked at a lot of the data and you're not feeling that optimistic uh, about the market, would you say? Well, I think it's a market that's driven almost entirely by what happens to inflation. I mean, here's where we are. We've come off a decade of uh, probably the lowest inflation we've had in the last 80 years, 1.5%. But now, if you look at actual inflation at about 8%, the market's trying to find its legs as to where between the 1.5 and 8% we're going to settle. We're not going to go back to 1.5. I, I don't think we're going to end up at 8. But I think until we know that, we're going to see the back and forth in the market. So let's talk about the possible range of outcomes uh, that you think investors need to be cognizant of, because you do paint scenarios that are everything from stocks do pretty well and, and you know, it's kind of hunky-dory to, you know, asset prices could drop another 50 percent from here. Right. The, the most benign scenario is that it, inflation fades really quickly and that you go back to 2 percent to 2.5 percent. I think that scenario is getting, the property of that scenario is getting smaller by the day. But that is the only benign scenario that almost all of the inflation is transitional. And once it's gone, we're going to go back to where we were. And if you truly believe that, then stocks are back. But any other scenario in the middle, there's going to be an adjustment phase here where interest rates have to adjust, stock prices have to adjust, and everything that you see as metrics, price earnings ratios, you know, whatever multiples you end up using, will have to reflect the new reality. What would you say to investors right now? So how do they proceed in, the, in this environment? Don't be casual about inflation. Don't assume that the Fed is going to somehow find a way to control inflation. And that's why I call it the genie out of the bottle. Once inflation is out, central banks really cannot control it without putting the economy into recession. So that's why almost every aspect of this economy, from earnings to, to interest rates to whether we're in a recession, is going to be driven by what happens to inflation. And that said, do we all just have to sit back and wait? Or, you know, do we all need to be part of the guessing game, trying to figure out based on metals prices one day versus energy prices the next and reading, you know, what Mester says on the one hand versus what Powell did or didn't say about the 75 basis point hike last night? Or is it, you know, long term inflation expectations or which break even measures? I mean, people are certainly trying to obsess over uh, this trajectory. I think rather than listen to what the Fed is saying and any of the people in the Fed are saying, I'd say watch the watch T-bond rates, 10-year rates, 30-year rates, because those are going to tell you where we're going to end up. I mean, the fact is we've doubled the Treasury note rate. The 10-year rate has doubled over the last four and a half months. That's, that's unheard of in the U.S. You don't see that much of, a, of an increase in rates. I think that's where you're going to see inflation expectations finally settle in. So rather than look to the Fed, look to the Treasury market, because that's where you're going to get early signals of where we're going. So you think the key to this market and, and to inflation is what happens with, let's call it the 10-year from here? Yeah, because the 10-year is going to reflect where our long-term expectations end up at. If they're going to end up at 4%, we we'll have a lot more pain in front of us, because that's, a, that's another 1% move in the 10-year rate, and that's another 20 25% drop in the S&P 500. And that's why this whole thing is about expected inflation and where we end up at. So if you are, as an investor, think you have a pretty strong take on, okay, I think rates have peaked, I think uh, inflation has peaked, you know, then that you can predicate your, your market outlook on. But um, I guess my point is it's as hard to forecast rates as it is to predict inflation or any of these other variables. And that leaves a lot of people feeling hopeless. So, sh so should they move to the sidelines? Do they stay in the market? Yeah, the problem with moving to the sidelines is getting back in is going to be really difficult. That's always been the problem with cashing out. Is cashing out is the easy part. Cashing back in is really tough to do. So I know people who cashed out in 2010 and never got back in the market for the right. next decade. If you're going to cash out, you need to have a trigger as to when you cash back in or you're going to stay in cash for a really long time. 